Hi, this is RNA with thetithinghoax.com. Let's talk about what the church doesn't want you to talk about today on the Tithing Hoax podcast. Stay tuned for this week's message. This is Arune. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the Tithing Hoax podcast. And I also want to give shout outs to everyone that has purchased the copy or a copy of the Tithing Hoax book, Exposing the Lies, Misinterpretations and False Teachings About Tithing. I was visiting the African American Literary Book Club website and they have a uh, bestsellers list for their fiction books as well as their non uh, for as well as um, nonfiction books. And I was taking a look at the the bestsellers list for the month of I think I think May and June. And to my pleasant surprise, the tithing hoax was number two on the bestsellers list on their list. So I really appreciate um, all of your support. And uh, if you want to purchase the Tithing Hoax, you can go on uh, Amazon.com and get it, or you can also download it um, from iTunes. But once again, uh, that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, um, I was glad to see that. And I'm I'm glad that uh, the Tithing Hoax book is, is being received so well by so many people and that and that the book is actually helping people and helping to shed light on this misunderstood topic and um and is helping uh people to discover the truth about uh biblical tithing and to um hopefully em- em- embrace that truth so thank you so much for the support and and also uh telling other people about uh, the Tithing Hoax uh, book and the website and everything that we're doing. So uh, much love to you and, and thank you so much for that. And in speaking of sharing the truth and speaking the truth about uh, the doctrine of, of tithing and the, the false teachings surrounding tithing, I got to thinking about how or the reasons why people reject the truth about tithing. And that truth being that Christians are not required or commanded to tithe and that the modern day tithe is not even biblical. And there are a number of reasons why people refuse to accept, acknowledge, or embrace that truth. And I got to thinking in particular, in particular about preachers who do not accept the truth about tithes. I won't acknowledge the truth about tithes. Uh, specifically, uh, preachers, of course, who promote tithing in their churches. And one thing I wanted to talk about, and one thing, one reason for their lack of um, accepting the truth has to do with ego. The preacher's Ego, E G O, and you've probably heard uh, some people refer to ego as edging God out, edging God out. That ego, the ego is something else. And I say, either you are ego centered in your in your thinking, or you're Christ centered. Either you're led by your ego or you're led by your spirit because ego and your spirit cannot occupy the same space at at the same time. You can't be ego centered and have the mind of Christ. You, those two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time. So if in this case, I'm speaking of, um, of preachers in particular, if a preacher is led by his or her ego and they are ego centered, it makes it very difficult to accept truth. The thing is, when you, when you, when you have a preacher 
who for years has heard that you're supposed to tithe and they've taught you're supposed to tithe and they've preached you're supposed to tithe that becomes their truth I mean they accept that as their truth the false beliefs are accepted as truth and when the truth actually the real truth reveals itself and presents itself the is is the ego will not allow for that truth to enter that preacher's mind because they are ego driven and oftentimes ego is coupled with arrogance because it's like who are you to tell me that what I've been teaching and preaching all these years is in error. That's not correct. Because I believe what I believe that what I'm teaching and preaching is true. So when the truth that, that someone presents to them seems to contradict what they believe is true, their ego will not allow, allow them to even, what's the word? to even engage the possibility that what they've been teaching and preaching is incorrect. Their ego won't allow them to go there, to even entertain the thought that maybe they are in error or, or what they're teaching is in error. And that's the danger of ego, of edging God out. And one of the things about ego Ego is a self-defense mechanism. The ego always seeks to protect itself. And in that, there are preachers who will not accept the truth about tithing because they don't want to look bad. They don't want to look bad. Can you imagine a preacher who's taught you got to tithe. You got to tithe. Who's built their, the financial part of their ministry based on tithing to now come before their congregation and admit that what they've taught their congregation was not correct. Can you imagine a preacher, actually a preacher, a pastor standing in the pulpit and admitting that what they were teaching about tithes is not correct. It's possible to happen, but it's hard to imagine <laughs> those preachers doing that. You know why? Because of ego. Even if they know the truth, will they admit that to their congregation? Ego won't allow them to do that because the ego does not want to look bad. They don't want to look like I don't know what I'm talking about. They don't they don't want to look like okay, I I got this totally wrong. Ego does not want to admit that. So that's what is it it means to have the to be ego centered instead of having the mind of Christ or to be spirit led. And then, you know, in 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 addition to that, not only does the preacher not want to look bad, he or she doesn't want to risk his or her empire, the empire that they have built on this doctrine, on this false doctrine. Because they're thinking, if I tell people the truth that they don't have to tithe, that this tithing thing is not biblical, that what we're doing, this 10% of your income is not required. You know what they're thinking? What's going to happen? People want to stop tithing. <laughs> More than likely, people are going to stop uh, tithing. They're going to stop giving over that 10% of their income or sowing those seeds. And that, that there's going to be a decline in the amount of money that that church is bringing in. And there are preachers, they don't want to suffer any financial loss by telling you the truth. And that's just the bottom line. 
they built up this this mega church. You know, if people stop tithing or there's a, a decrease, significant decrease in, in tithing, if we, once we tell people the truth, how are we going to pay for this mega church? How are we going to keep keep uh, uh, the television shows on air and, and keep the radio programs going? How how am I going to maintain my lifestyle? This mansion I live in, all these, these luxury cars and, you know, that's what they're looking at. I can't tell you the truth. Because telling you the truth is going to hurt my financial situation. Possibly. Potentially. But that's ego. That's arrogance. And so my question to the ego-driven preachers is, where's the repentance? What about repentance? Where, what, what role does repentance play in your Christian life? lifestyle and your Christian walk preacher the root word of repentance is repent repent means what to change one's mind and that's why we're confronted with the truth the truth is presented to us whether we like it or not for the purpose of changing our mind about certain things and certain things that we may have false beliefs about and be, and we may be, we may have error in our thinking. So we present it with truth. So what, so what we can change our mind. We can change our thoughts. When you repent, you change your thoughts. And when you change your thoughts, your behaviors change. When you, when you change your thoughts, what you speak changes. Preacher, when you repent and you change your thoughts, you then will change what you teach and what you preach. People repent when they're presented with the truth. Truth precedes repentance. However, if you are ego-driven, E-G-O, edging God out, you can't accept the truth. You can't acknowledge it. You can't recognize it. You can't, you can't receive it. And if you can't acknowledge it, recognize it, receive it, the truth, then there's no repentance and you can't repent. Ego won't allow you to repent. Ego won't allow you to change your mind. So that's why you have to be mindful about who and what you follow in this day and time. I always say, don't follow man. Follow the truth. Don't follow man. Follow the spirit. Because if you find yourself following a man and, and, or a woman who is ego driven, you going you're going to be led straight to hell, to hell. You know, and I'm and not literal hell, but for instance, such as financial hell, financial problems. Because if you you're following a following an ego driven preacher, who is teaching a false doctrine such as this whole tithing thing, that can lead you and cause you to stumble into financial problems and, and whatever other types of problems that are associated that are associated with following a false doctrine. So, you know, don't don't get caught up because you like the way the preacher preaches. You like their style, you like their swagger. Uh you, you're caught up in their charisma. You have to look at well, is what he or she saying true? That's that's what's important is is now that's why I say follow the truth, follow the spirit, don't follow the person, the persona. When I, and I said when I said earlier about can you imagine a preacher standing before his or her con- congregation admitting that they've been teaching a false doctrine about tithing? Um, the closest scenario of that is with th- that hap- that happened actually was with Reverend Jim Baker. Do you remember Reverend Jim Baker? Um, he's back on the air uh, now. He has a, a television ministry. 
But, you know, back in the day in the 70s and the 80s, Jim and Tammy Faye Baker, Tammy Faye with the makeup and the eyelashes and, you know, and, and may she rest in peace. She passed away a few years ago. Jim Baker was like the poster child of the prosperity gospel back in the 70s and 80s. Jim Baker had it going on. Jim Baker and his wife, Tammy Faye, they were the founders of uh, the PTL Club, Praise the Lord, the PTL Club. From there, they they created the PTL Network. They had the Heritage USA theme park. And at the peak of their success, of their heyday, Jim Baker's, Jim Baker and his ministry, his television ministry, they were generating $1 million a week. People were sending in, the people who followed the Bakers, they were sending in to the tune of $1 million a week. So the Bakers were balling and straight balling out of control off the prosperity gospel. Now, amidst a sexual scandal and an indictment for mail fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy, Jim Baker lost everything. He lost everything, he, and he ended up going to prison for five years. And when he came out of prison, he he published a book called I Was Wrong. And in this book, and you can go on 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 the Internet and actually pull up a, a excerpt from the book. In this book, he admits pretty much that during his television ministry. You know, he was so busy building his empire and you know promoting this pr- prosperity gospel that he really didn't spend time actually studying the Bible. It was only when he was in prison and he had a lot of time on his hand, on his hands in prison. That's when he actually took the time and read the Bible. Specifically, he read the teachings of G- of Jesus. And what he realized is that what he was teaching the prosperity gospel that he was teaching at that time, the prosperity, that same prosperity gospel that made him a multimillionaire, the same prosperity gospel that was generating $1 million a week for, for, for him and his ministry and his family did not line up with any of the teachings of Jesus the Christ. I have a couple of quotes from, from the book. Here's what he had to say. He said, The more I studied the Bible, however, I had to admit that the prosperity message did not line up with the tenor of Scripture. My heart was crushed to think that I led so many people astray. I was appalled that I could have been so wrong. And I was deeply grateful that God had not struck me down, excuse me, struck me dead as a false prophet. He also said, in my cell, I studied the Bible long hours into the night, often as the sun rose in the eastern sky, I was still pouring over the scriptures. The more I studied, the more I had to face the awful truth. I had been preaching false doctrine for years and hadn't even known it. Jim Baker admitted that he was wrong. He admitted that the prosperity gospel message that he was preaching was wrong. Yes, it made him wealthy, but he was wrong. And it took him losing everything to come to that revelation to discover the truth. And he repented. In fact, you can go on YouTube and you can watch a video in, uh, entitled Jim Baker denounces the prosperity gospel. And you can see him talking about, uh, talking about, you know, his experience with that and, you know, and why it's, and why it's a false 
false doctrine. He is a prime example of someone who repented. You know, he was ego tripping back in the day. You know, when people were critical of the the gospel that he was teaching, he wasn't trying to hear that criticism. You know, he found ways to justify it. He wouldn't listen. So God got his attention. And you see how God (laughs) got his attention. Jim Baker had to literally lose everything and hit rock bottom for God to get his attention. And when God got his attention, Jim Baker read and studied and and came into the truth. So he repented. And so the reason why I talk about and ask questions like preachers, where is your repentance? What what happened to repentance? Is your ego more important than, than repentance? Because there are virtues to repentance. It's not a it's not a negative thing to admit that, wow, like Jim Baker, I was wrong. Or what I was teaching is not correct. Take your ego out of it. Because with repentance, you grow. You grow spiritually and you grow emotionally. When you're ego driven, you're, you're, you're stunted. Your growth is stunted. Your emotional and spiritual growth is stunted. When you repent, it opens you up. And it helps to take you to another level. Also, when you repent, you are humbled. Jim Baker was humbled. The other side of ego is humility. The truth is a humbling experience. It's not always that, you know, receiving the truth and being presented with the truth is not always easy to accept. But if you open yourself up, you put your ego aside, you find that it will humble you. And seeing once you are humbled, you are now developing a teachable spirit. You're opening opening yourself up and, uh, and allowing the most high to reveal truths to you. You don't have to get knocked upside the head and you don't have to be, you don't necessarily have to lose everything like Jim Baker if you develop a teachable spirit. And say, okay, God, what is, what is he trying to teach me? What are you trying to tell me? What is it you want to show me? I'm opening, I'm open, I'm listening, I'm receptive. Have a teachable spirit. You can't have a teachable spirit when you're, when you're ego tripping. And with repentance, it allows you to be spirit led and not ego driven. You don't edge God out. So when I look at, preachers and and i'm tell you something now you know there are preachers who who don't realize that what they're teaching is false but once again i had a sneaky suspicion that there are preachers who know who do know the truth but they're not going to share that truth with their with the congregations their ego won't allow them to their ego tripping and with the ego dominates there's no repentance. You can't, how can you repent? Because you have to be able to, to accept truth in order to repent, to, in other words, change your mind about something, to change your mind about this particular doctrine. So if your ego's, the ego has a way of blocking the truth. So if you block the truth, there's no repentance. And once again, you know, don't get caught up in following the man or following the woman who's preaching. Follow truth, follow spirit, not the person. And for the preachers out there who are ego tripping or ego driven and and don't want to accept the truth about the tithe and are reluctant to teach and share the truth about it, even if you do know the truth. Keep in mind that repentance is admirable. It's, it's not all about you, preacher. It is in terms of repentance is there to, to mature you, you know, emotionally, spiritually, and to set you on the right path. Don't you want to be on the right path? And when you have so many people, thousands, perhaps millions of people listening to you to 
the words that proceed out of your mouth and they're following you and following what you're saying. If you're on the right path, then the people who are following you can be on the right path also. So repentance is an admirable thing for you personally and for the people who are following you or listening to you. So my thing is preachers stop ego tripping, get your ego out the way, stop edging God out, get your mind right, (laughs) develop the mind of Christ, Um, allow yourself to be led by the spirit so you can be open and receptive to the truth about tithes and any other thing, any other uh, issue. R. Renee here. Thank you for tuning in and listening to the Tithing Hoax podcast. For more information about the Tithing Hoax, visit thetithinghoax.com, download your free tithe study guide, or drop us an email at info at Until next time, peace and blessings.